I, I actually think it's not dissimilar to the early stages of the industrial revolution, actually. And, and I, I see reactions from organizations. I mean, interestingly, the, the screenwriters guild at the moment on strike to try feels to me a bit like the Luddites and the loo and, and powered looms at the start of the industrial revolution, which is. Hey everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I'm so glad we have Adrian King here, the CTO of Elements.Cloud. Adrian has spent a ton of time in the technology world and lately around generative AI. And as you are probably aware, Elements.Cloud is at the bleeding edge of it when it comes to metadata analysis and a lot of interesting things that they're doing. Fortunately, Adrian is also a speaker at Enterprise Dreaming where he's talking about roadmaps around AI and what kind of futuristic things that technology and thought leaders should be thinking about. So let me turn it over to Adrian and ask him, Adrian, what can our attendees expect from your session? If you can help us understand. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, what I want to do is try and paint a picture about where AI is likely to go and the impact that's going to have on the enterprise. I mean, AI is nothing new. AI has got a 75 year history to get to where it is today. It's just this exploded into people's consciousness in the last six months. You know, OpenAI launched and basically released ChatGPT to the general public. They weren't quite sure what to do with it. Thought, actually, we'll just open it up and see if not people are interested. And it just unleashed this wave of probably the most profound wave of, of technology engagement I've seen in my 40 years, 38 years of, of being in the IT world. It's already profound the type of things that it's unleashed. Now, in, in our business today, we're already seeing 20, 30% productivity improvements in some areas just using chat GPT and chat GPT being one application based built on top of large language models. But we're already starting to see many use cases where we can start to build large language model and GPT capability into the way we work. But I think the really, really interesting thing is we've seen nothing yet. The analogy which I like to think of is, you know, the, the ice hockey one. You shouldn't be skating to where the puck is now. You should be skating to where the puck will be. And where the puck will be with, with AI is quite profound at the moment in terms of business. And I'm not talking about a decade out. I'm talking 12 months out. You know, the, the type of things that we're thinking about internally is just the size of the context when you, when you are inter interacting with the language models. And, and what I mean by that is, I'm sure anybody who's dealt with chat GPT knows that you can, you can write your chat and over time, you know, backwards and forwards, but there's actually a limit to how much information that you can put into the prompt. And it depends on the language model. You know, chat GPT originally was 4,000 tokens with 3.5 was 4,000 tokens, which is about 12,000 characters. And with GPT-4, it went to 8,000 tokens, or if you're willing to pay a lot of money, 32,000. And these type of things actually are profound in terms of the way you interact. The way I think about a large language model and GPT as, as, a, as a, uh, from an AI, as an example, is it's like having a very, very, very well-informed consultant who actually knows an enormous amount about the world, is very eloquent, but knows nothing about your specific use case, or your specific data. And actually knows nothing really since September 2021, because that was when it was trained. So when you're interacting with it, it knows this big corpus of information. And the context is the specific information that you're adding to that, that knowledge. And if you've got a, a problem around company data that you want to interact with, you're very limited about how much data you can give. So think about where the puck's going to be. It's already gone from 2K tokens to 32K tokens, and actually the Claude 2 model that is available, and actually it's the one of the ones which AWS is going to be launching with their Bedrock product, can take 100,000 tokens, which is about 300,000 characters. Well, 300,000 characters is now quite a lot of information you can give it. But I was reading a, an academic paper a couple of weeks ago where they're talking about a billion token context. Now, a billion token context put into is that as a well-read individual, I'm likely to read a billion words in my lifetime. So actually, the context I can give would be everything I would read in my lifetime can be the, the context I can put into the prompt. I don't even know what that means in terms of the use cases and the opportunities. 
But I do know that if we're not thinking about it as enterprise technology leaders, we are going to fall behind the competitors who will be thinking about this. So anyhow, I think you know, drawing on my session, I just want to lay out a bit more about what the implications of this, the types of use cases that are emerging, the types of things that we're seeing genuinely adding productivity. But I also want to be thinking about not, I want to be thinking about where the puck's likely to be and the types of use cases that we should be thinking about, we should be starting to think about. And I'm not talking about where the puck's going to be in a decade or two decades. I'm talking about where it's going to be in 12 months' time or 18 months' time. Because the level of investment that's going on is so big at the moment. And there's so much pressure to do stuff. But we're, going, we're seeing transformational changes in the technology right at the moment. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you mentioned this because the session is particularly really two components. One is a lot of stuff that you're talking about on the what's the advancement, what's happening on the technology front. And the other aspect of this is how do you deliver on those, which is where I think Anand comes in. Anand is the CTO at Test Talks. And he and I are going to talk a little bit about how do you build a roadmap? What kind of compelling business use cases do you look at? What are the kind of technology choices do you make when you talk about this, like a zero shot learning versus a fine tuned many shot learning model? And the kind of, you know, the pros and cons, the, the, considerations for making choices one versus the other. And I think what you mentioned is so profound, particularly for technologists, like everybody's scampering to keep up with, if, with this AI wave and how fast it's evolving. Literally every morning I, I read news and I feel like I'm less informed about AI. That, that, great, great comment, which is over the last few months as I've peeled back the onion and I've spent probably like yourself a lot of time just reading up and, and it's felt like hours a day. It felt like the more I, the more I had read, the less I knew. And, and actually I feel I've gone through that curve. I'm actually now feeling much more confidence by understanding, but for, for, for several months, I, I genuinely felt that the, the more I read, the more perplexed I was and the less I really understood about what the opportunities were. And I, I think I've come through that now and I've now got a good foundation of of understanding what the opportunities now are, but you, you're right. I mean, I, I went on vacation for two weeks and I really decided to have a break and I came back and was like, oh my goodness, I wonder how far the world has moved in two weeks. And actually quite a lot had happened in that time. And if you're not on top of this the whole time, it is moving at a, at a frightening rate right at the moment. And let's say building on 75 years of knowledge, suddenly you've parachuted in hundreds of thousands of smart technologists to start to think how to exploit this and amazing things are starting to happen. Underpinned by things like organizations like Salesforce, who've actually been thinking about AI for many, many years. And actually around things like generative AI, they, they, they didn't come into this when ChatGPT hit the world. They've been working on this for a long period of time beforehand to understand the power of starting to use this in enterprise solutions like you know, the service GPT, sales GPT, all the different particular use cases, which they're delivering is, you know, there's, there's been significant long-term investment from organizations like Salesforce to exploit the technology. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's such a fascinating area. And I think anybody, if you're a thinker in an organization on technology, if you are an architect, if you are a VP in IT or in the business side, and you're thinking about how do we really leverage it? Like on the hyper side, I think this is really a once in a lifetime opportunity of the amount of disruption it's going to bring and the sheer amount of innovation that we can drive out of this Excellent. very, very incredible area. When I first came into it, hype around it, I did think there was a lot of hype and there is some hype around, around it, but, but it is genuinely profoundly changing at the moment. I, I actually think it's not dissimilar to the early stages of the industrial revolution, actually, and and I, I see reactions from organizations. I mean, interestingly, the, the Screenwriters Guild at the moment on strike to try, feels to me a bit like the Luddites and the loo and, and powered looms at the start of the Industrial Revolution, which is, I'm sorry, but, and I, I have great sympathy with where they are. You're not going to stop this. And the very early on, I can't remember who it was, said, AI won't take your job. Somebody who knows how to use AI well will, will take your job. And that was actually the advice I gave my son, who's currently just finishing college at the moment, was that 
you need to understand how this technology can be used and become very, very good at understanding the use cases. If you don't, you, you're, he's, he's reading, he's majoring in economics. And I said, if you don't, you're going to end up steamrolled by people who know how to use this right at the moment. And I think it's, it's why it's incumbent on all of us as technology leaders to really understand the opportunity here and not be steamrolled by it. Absolutely. It's like knowing how to use the internet, right? Knowing how to use Google search in the very early days of when Google came. And I think you're correct. Like anybody who's not looking at it in terms of how do I leverage this? How do I get good at it? How do I harness the power of it? They will be at a competitive disadvantage. Organizations, industries, us as individuals. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, I'm really looking forward to this very interesting and intriguing session, Adrian, with you and Anand, and I am sure so are others. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your expertise and experience with everyone. It's a pleasure.